Hi, I'm James Lamon, fellow at the Vadin Center for Rural Economic Development at the University of Minnesota Crookston. Today we're going to discuss the implications of the July 2022 heat wave, both on domestic and international agriculture. We'll start in the northeastern United States, where drought coupled with high temperatures have resulted in draining of the swamplands, forcing uh, cranberry growers, blueberry growers, and others that require swamplands and associated moisture to actually leverage municipal water supplies in order to irrigate their crops. As we move into the midsection of the country, Kansas, for example, 105 declared, or declared drought counties. This impacts livestock and their access to water. This uh, naturally impacts the feedstock for livestock. This also has a major impact on corn production as there's an anticipation from year over year of a one-third reduction in product. Oregon is seeing massive depletion in terms of its ability to grow wine this cycle, not because of the hot temperatures, but because of the lack of moisture. And California continues to experience its major drought. On a global scale, we're seeing similar issues in Europe. For example, the UK will actually have to move its harvest up by 14 days due to the heat and the 35% increase in wildfires. And you're seeing similar harvest cycles in France, Spain, Italy, and other parts of Europe. This has been the most intense heat on record so far this early in the season. And of all the countries, it appears as though France has been hit the hardest. Moving to South Asia, we're seeing large mango and uh, wheat crop failures. This is also due to moisture as well as high temperatures. This also comes during a time of wheat market constraints, even though there have been recent deals signed. And um, simultaneously, other staples throughout Southeast Asia as well as Southern Asia uh, will continue to see uh, major implications associated with the growing cycles as well. Thank you for joining me and have a great summer.